Fairness Creativers presents a word for every generation that knows no fashion. Greetings. I hope and trust I find you well. We have one more experience for the week as we meet the children of Israel. They are on their exodus voyage from Egypt headed to the promised land. We meet them as they walk into Rephidim. Come with me to the book of Exodus and we want to look at chapter 17. We'll look at verse 1 and verse 8. It reads as follows in the Holy Bible. And all the congregation of the children of Israel journeyed from the wilderness of Sin after their journeys, according to the commandments of the Lord, and camped in Rephidim. And there was no water for the people to drink. Verse 8, Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. May the good Lord bless the reading of his word as we spend a moment in prayer. Let us pray. Kind and gracious Father in the heavens above, thank you, dear Lord, for the blessing of studying your word. As we walk into this week, dear Lord, some of us may face deprivation and some of us may even face physical assault, whether it be literal or even in the spiritual realm. How we pray, dear Lord, that you may be our provider and be our conqueror and victor for us. This has been our prayer of faith. In Jesus' name we pray and we ask, Amen and Amen. My dear friends, we have just five points that I wish to raise for us as we start the week. The children of Israel, as I have mentioned earlier, they have just walked out of the wilderness of sin. They are walking into Rephidim. I am thinking at the back of their minds. They know they have been in a wilderness, a place of less, a place of scantity, a place that has little vegetation, a place of high temperature, a place of little water. And now as they walk into Rephidim, Rephidim, by the way, means a resting place. I'm sure their spirits were elevated. Their hopes were revived. They looked forward to a better stay with better comfort needs. Now as they go into Rephidim, what do they discover? Rephidim shall be the place where they shall be deprived of water. Rephidim is the place where they shall be attacked by the Amalekites. What am I saying to you this morning at point number one? You have been following God, but following God may lead you from the wilderness of sin into Rephidim. It may lead you from bad to a worse of situation. It does not always mean when we follow God, we shall always prosper. When we follow God, we shall always soar high like the eagles. When we follow God, we shall always have it all. It does not always mean that. Following God also means you may find yourself in Rephidim. In those days of less and in the days of assaults and in the days of challenges, you are still following God. You are still following God. Some of us are going to follow God and find ourselves in a Rephidim this week. We are going to find ourselves in challenging positions. We are still walking in the footsteps of the God who has commanded us. At point number two, when we find ourselves in Rephidim, the children of Israel, God saw cross with Moses up to a point that they even tried God and tempted him by asking the question, is the Lord among us? This is the Lord who just in chapter 16 has been giving them manna. Now they ask the question, is the Lord among us? There comes a time when we are faced with hardships and we begin to ask the questions, whether verbally or we do so at the back of our minds. We ask the questions, is the Lord among us? And Moses even goes on to play, name the place Massa and Meribah, the place of trial and temptation. Even when we meet our problems, may we not get to a point where we try God, where we try the leadership. Let us not become difficult people because of the trials and the tribulations of Rephidim. These should not impact our relationship with God. Why? Because we serve a God who has solutions up his sleeves. He just delays them 
so that we can grow in endurance, hope, and faith. As the children of Israel are in Rephidim, they say, Moses, we have been deprived for too long as a nation, deprived for too long as tribes, denied these resources as families, as individuals. Moses is the Lord among us who is in charge. To prove that he's in charge, I love the way God just shows off. He says, Moses, take that road. I mean, the road that you threw um, before Pharaoh. Take that road, the road that was used to part the waters of the Red Sea. Walk over to the rock at Horeb, which is Horeb. Horeb is the mountain of God. Horeb is the mountain of Sinai. Horeb is the mountain where Moses was called by God. Come, go and deliver the children of Israel out of Egypt. Go to that rock. Strike it. And Moses calls the elders. He walks over to the rock. He strikes it. And thereafter, water gushes out of the rock. And Paul, as he makes a commentary on this, he says this very rock was Jesus Christ. God provides solutions in a way that is unprecedented. He provides solutions only in the way God can provide. Only God can bring water out of a well. Only God can cause streams out of rocks. God can cause streams out of stones. God can cause water to come out of a rock. May he speak into the rocks in your lives. May he cause water to come out. May he cause life, regeneration, and rejuvenation to come out of your situations this very moment in Jesus' name. When they have received water, the Bible says at verse 8, then came Amalek. Who is Amalek? Amalek is the descendant of Esau. Remember, Esau and Israel had their own issues. Now the descendants of Esau meet the descendants of Israel, Jacob. You go back to Genesis chapter 32, you're going to find Esau and Jacob meeting each other. Esau and Israel reconvening. But when their children meet, it is an opportunity of fighting. And I ask you this question, when your generation, your next generation and that of your siblings meet, will they meet with love? Will they welcome each other? Or it shall be a moment of fighting. The Amalekites go out there. Now they are fighting them literally. As they fight, come with me to point number five. As we conclude, Moses appoints Joshua. And says, Joshua, you are going to fight because the Amalekites have been weeding out our people from the tail. Now we need to deal with this. Joshua was on the ground force and Moses elevated himself to the air force. He went up there with her, who was his uh, brother-in-law because he was married to Miriam, so I believe, and Aaron. As they got to the top of the hill, I love this. The Lord says, Moses, you shall lift your hands over Joshua and the children of Israel. As Moses lifted up his hands toward heaven to call upon heaven and petition, he was covering the flank of the air force. As Joshua was fighting on the ground, he was covering the ankle of their ground force. Whenever we are in our nations, all nations have a minimum of the ground force and the air force. I'm talking about landlocked countries. Of course, those who have water bodies next to them, they'll have the marines of the navy. But air force and the ground force are the minimum. And God is saying unto you, if you are to victor this week, make sure you are covered on the ground force. Make sure you are secure and the air force in the air. God covers our air force. God says, when we go into battle, connect with heaven first, for that is where you win. When Moses lifted up his hands, there was a victory on the ground. But when Moses' hands came down, there was a loss on the ground. Keep your hands up and high. May the Lord cover you on the air force as you fight long and hard on the ground force. The Amalekites will never conquer over you. You are set for victory. May the Lord continue to sustain you. May your air force deliver today. May your ground force move on with strength and with power until we meet again on Friday. Blessings and peace.